Oops. Uh oh. Let's put this back on there. Okay. And get all the go lives. Okay, howdy everybody, this is Shay Rippinger of Hip to Hoopla, and I am live from the Hip to Hoopla studios with my kitty who's sitting behind me. I'm sitting on the edge of my seat here, and so anyway, this is the show. Welcome to the show. We do a little bit of health, a little bit of humor, and a little bit of hooping, and we're going to do it in a little short amount of time, and uh, yes, hopefully all the tech holds up, and we're good to go. All right. Welcome. I'm going to start you off all off. Where, where'd my notes go? Uh, <laughs> there we go. Well, there we are. Um, with uh, some of the health stuff. So it's health, humor, and hooping. So we're going to switch up the order tonight. This is a new format, so I'm still um, massaging out the details on this. Um, let me know if you guys would like to do this on a once a week basis, or I was thinking today that this might be great as a once, once a month show, like the first Monday of the month. So let me know um, in the comments if uh, what, what you like, and we'll go from there. So, alrighty. So um, I would like to start us off with one of the health tips for today, which is a laughter yoga exercise. As you well know, um, or you may or may not know, I'm a laughter yoga certified laughter yoga leader, and so I like to do a little bit of laughter yoga in my hip the hoopla um, workshops and classes. And so that's one of the things I'd like to start here. And I just came up with a new one and I call it smile breath. So what it is, is we're gonna inhale in and as you inhale in, you're going to smile. And as you exhale out, you're going to just breathe it out with an audible ha, like ha 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 ha. So we're gonna inhale it in and then exhale it out, ha. Inhale it in. Exhale it out, ha. Inhale it in. Exhale it out, ha. So you can do as many of those as you like. You can take those with some nice deep breaths. You can take them with a deep breath or a little bit of a more shallow breath. If you take deep breaths, you can do fewer of them. But um, this, so you know, you can get a little lightheaded if you do a whole bunch of those. But it's nice to just get that in and get some smiling in with your day. So that's not the all out belly laughter type of um, exercise that we may be used to in some of the laughter yoga exercises, but there's such a variety of laughter yoga exercises out there. So, and at the end of laughter yoga exercises, what we do is we clap the hands together and we go, very good, very good, yay. Very good, very good, yay. The reason why we do that, you may or may not know, is there are a whole bunch of acupressure points on the fingertips. So, and it's just one of those things that Dr. Katara and his wife, when they started laughter yoga, um, they do this as a way to signify the end of laughter yoga exercises. So, also, you never see little children running around with a sad face when they do that. So, you see them in happy face. So, if you ever want to, um, get your co-workers amused or um, people around you just start doing that as an adult yeah that 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 usually gets people's attention but the nice thing is this helps energize not only your happy points but just there's a lot of acupressure points on your hands so this livens up a lot of things in your body so just trying that throughout your day will be helpful so there's one of your help help tips for the day one of your next ones that i wanted to bring up is Brain coordination and opposite sides. So one of the things I always um, propose in hooping is that hoopers hoop on both sides. So what I mean by that is a lot of times when we are hooping, we tend to hoop in whatever our favorite direction is when we're waist hooping or whatever the case may be. So um, what I'd like you to try is hooping in both directions. And the reason is, is for the second um, health tip, which is that the brain the one side of the brain, so the right side of the brain operates the left side of the body and the right, the left side of the brain operates the right side of the body. So when you start using both sides of the body, 
and uh, not just depending on, and I use air quotes, on your so-called dominant side. And I only call it a dominant side. That's the reason why I use air quotes is because we tend to do things with a predominant side. Most people aren't ambidextrous, meaning they don't use both sides of the body. Um, so they usually, a lot of people are right-hand dominant. Some people are left-hand dominant. And um, so there's, there's a neat trick that you can do that I've been told with this. And that is you take your hands and you cross them um, like you would when you go to fold your hands. So when you just fold your hands and just do it how you just normally do it. And then the cool thing is, is that you look down at your hands and you see which thumb is up. So the thumb that is on top or up is the actually what is your natural predominant side. So a lot of us has been taught. So for instance, my I have my left thumb up and um, I'm generally speaking, I call my I identify with being right handed um, because one of the reasons why this is important is we've been taught in schools that, um, generally speaking, um, unless you were able to become a strong um, flag wave and lefty, a lot of times people were put into the, the pigeonhole of you must write with your right hand. And so those of us who grew up in times where you, you actually learn cursive and things like that, um, you know, <laughs> this isn't cursive, but um, back in the day, uh, they predominantly taught with right hand. And if you go back, way back, um, and if you went to a school that had uh, religious uh, aspects, you might have gotten your hands whacked with a ruler by a nun. <laughs> so I didn't have that happen to me. They, uh, that was against the rules when I went to school, but um, that still may be uh, a possibility for some people in some cultures. So anyway, okay, kitty. Bad time to clean yourself. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay, so here's the cat cameo of the day. See? She's so cute. Look at those little feetsies. Isn't she, darling? This is Kitty Capri, and she just loves to come in here when I need to get stuff done and, um, and um, do what she wants to do instead. <laughs> so, <laughs> which makes life very amusing. Okay, so we did the smile breath, the brain coordination um, about trying to work both sides of the body. And um, the third thing about that is um, that when you use both sides of your brain, you will create new neural pathways. So especially when, so let's say you're like, for instance, I'm right hand dominant. So if I brush my teeth, that feels comfortable to me brushing my teeth with my right hand. If I try and do it with my left hand, it feels like I'm going to poke my eye out with my toothbrush, right? So, um, but let's say something happens to your dominant side and you have to use your other side, your less dominant side. Now, the cool thing about this is your so-called, and again, I'm using air quotes, dominant side gets more practice time. So it gets more flight time, air time, play time. And so practice time, basically. And if you use your less dominant side, it can become less, less dominant and uh, more adept at doing things because you use it more. So try every once in a while brushing your teeth with your opposite, you know, dominant side. Try doing things in your other side. Try writing. That's a, that's a challenging one. But, um, unless you are ambidextrous. Um, I learned this little trick in martial arts because you never wanted to just, um, it, well, for, for the style that I learned, which was Jeet Kune Do, you wanted to be able to move around. So Jeet Kune Do came from Bruce Lee, and um, he was all about, you know, using anything and everything that was available and useful for you. So that was a really neat thing because me as a small person, I didn't necessarily use the same techniques that, you know, other fighters might have used to help the, aid them in a situation. But anyway, um, but I also learned from an awesome boxer who um, a lot of times when you get in your fighting stance, this is an interesting off-topic thing, but again, this is part of the health thing. So, you know, you'd get in your, your fighting stance would be like this. And so, interestingly enough, women, this is this little side fact, women make great fighters. And the reason being is because 
we don't necessarily follow all the rules. So when you see a guy set up for a fight, and again, generally speaking, there are guys who, who break the rules on this, but they generally start out and you can see exactly what they're gonna do because they have a stance, they have what's called a fighter stance. So you usually have a foot in front and a foot behind and you, you're the same, same lead and then you, you punch accordingly. So you can see that hip move and you can telegraph, you know, they call it telegraphing your punches because you can see the, the torso start twisting. So if this starts twisting or if I start moving, that right hand is coming. So it's an interesting thing. So one of the guys that I learned from right off the bat, I loved his style and nobody could touch him. So because he had the style where he switched this up. So he switched up his lead foot and he switched up his guard hand. So he could, he could bat down the punches and he could guard his face too. And so it was really interesting because back in the day when I used to do martial arts and I used to fight, um, and again, this was in a closed setting. I didn't actually go pick fights or anything like that. So anybody who thinks I'm a violent person, oh, absolutely not. I'm the, the, the opposite of that. I have never been in a fight that I know, not, not a physical fight, you know, um, because that's just not my thing. But anyway, um, the, 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 the thing with that is, so some people would laugh at me because they, they, they thought this looked really weird because they hadn't seen it before. And the interesting thing was, I'm like, you know, you can laugh at me all you want, but you're not getting in to hit me as much as other people who set up in a certain way. So like, for instance, if you're set up like this and this one hand is back, this is an open area. So you, you have this lead hand, but if you get this hand taken out, then you have everything open. So that's why you, you switch it up, you switch your positioning and stuff like that. But that was creating new neural pathways in the brain. So when you create new neural pathways, it expands your brain capacity. So you get to grow new brain cells. Um, it's a really cool um, thing. Neural, uh, brain neuroplasticity is um, what they refer to it these days. There used to be a time when we thought brain cells died and once they died, they were gone. So um, back in the day, I was told um, that like when you drank alcohol, you killed brain cells. And so when you kill brain cells, they were gone. And I think that was the story told to us so you wouldn't drink. Um, that didn't stop a lot of people from drinking. So we just all thought we were going to get stupid. But the uh, newer neural science is that you actually do and can grow brain cells um, and also, a recommendation that I would love to recommend is Dr. Daniel Amens. He does a lot of brain work. Um, he has a lot of great books out there. He does some PBS specials. So um, I think he has a new one out um, currently that's called Memory Rescue. Uh, I just watched that recently. It's really good. He had another one before that. And he had like 50 different ways to um, improve your brain um, you're just your brain and uh because there's so much that's involved with that so you know between alzheimer's and you know how you think how you act how uh, your emotions um how you are emotionally you know like for depressed people uh there's there's actual brain chemistry and if you know some more of these brain things you can help solve some of these problems in different ways other than going and getting drugs so as you may well know by now that I am not a drug advocate. Obviously there's a time and place for certain things if you need them and in an emergency situation, great. But generally speaking, if you can do preventative maintenance with other forms of things, such as meditation, good nutrition, great sleep, um, getting exercise, all those kind of things, that will help and go a long way to keeping and helping and preserving your health. So, all right, so there's the health portion of today's show, which uh, hopefully you enjoyed that portion. And um, I want you to go over some of, let's see, we did the humor because we, we did the smile breath. And hopefully I, I let, you enjoy the way that I describe things because I like to be kind of silly in them. So although I am talking about some serious topics, I like to approach them with a nice, gentle, um, fun thing. Hence the cat cameo. <laughs> Poor kitty. <laughs> I know. Yes. I love you too. You're so sweet. Yes. She's such a cute kitty. Okay. So 
We are working on in our uh, workshop this week for Hip the Hoopla. So if you're live and local and in the Denver, Colorado area, Lakewood area, um, we'll be working this week on creative choreography. So I wanted to give you some hooping because this is about hooping. Some of it's about hooping. This show is a little bit of a few different things. So I, I definitely like to... Um, get some other things in so you know including recipes and health tips and interesting things that hopefully make your life a little bit more interesting better um helpful in whatever ways that uh, that are your takeaways so my theory is if you get one golden nugget from something it's worth your time and effort so maybe that you know and especially if you put it to use right away so if you just like just listen to this and don't, never put anything into use then it's not going to be of value to you. So anyway, uh, we're the the choreography. So hooping choreography, creative choreography. I like to have a few. Of, these are a few of my tips for choreography. Now all of us choreograph a little bit different. Some people that go out there and choreograph, and I don't care if it's for dance. It could be for martial arts. You could be doing a weightlifting competition and you have a section where you have to do poses that's choreography you could be doing a um a, a dance review you know or a strip show or you know whatever there's choreography in a lot of things you could be even doing a speech presentation and you need to do a demo you may want to think about the choreography that goes into how you get your speech presented how you walk in if you have to do any demonstration of anything for your speech some of that that blocking that can be choreography so choreography is not just for dance um, it can be a lot of different things. Choreography can be in martial arts. Um, we had things where, like when I did competitions, you did um, katas, well, which is like a dance choreography, but with martial arts moves. So that kata is, you know, in, you know, you practice these certain moves in a certain way. If you're an athlete, maybe you do a certain type of choreography for your training. So certain moves, like perhaps you do preparation moves. We're, we're do, watching the Olympics right now, and all of these really well-trained athletes, they have their routines that they go through, whether they be an ice dancer or a gymnast or, you know, even a luge person or, you know, uh, well, snowboarder, obviously, they're doing specific moves and, and things like that. So there could be different warm-up and cool-down activities that could be a choreography for you. So a lot of times you see these people with their headsets in. So they're listening to whatever gets them jazzed or pumped to excite and motivate them or keep them on track. Um, so whatever that may be for you, perhaps there's some music that you like use that uh, if you if you like to do that there's a lot of times where when I'm doing stuff I can't necessarily have ear things in my ears because it just, it takes me away from my my surroundings so um, I may have like one ear plug in one ear butt in and one ear out so that I can hear around me and stuff like that that's a safety thing so nobody jumps you in the gym <laughs> so anyway um, it could happen probably not highly likely but if you are running in a park or something like that or at dusk of dawn and or doing training like that it is important to not have your music blasting and also to not do that while you're driving because you might miss emergency vehicles and all that kind of stuff so there's a uh, health tip that could save you from a ticket and or um, thank you <laughs> um, other things that um, could could prevent um, harm to you so um, you don't want to get stopped by a cop you don't want to get stopped by a mugger uh, so you want to get all your stuff done and but have your your stuff at a gentle level also to preserve your hearing too so okay three tips that I use for choreography one is to pick out your music and I think that the music that you pick is very important. Uh, it, it, for me, it's, it's an emotional thing. So it's something that I really relate to for music. So I might pick out a slow piece or um, a fast piece, whatever it is. I personally, and this is just me personally, everybody's different. I like something that changes tempo a little bit. 
um, if I'm going to choreograph. For me, also, if I'm performing, I like something that's under around three minutes or under. So anything, I call anything like five minutes, you know, the four or five minute range, uh, self-indulgent if you're performing out. Because it, especially if it's a solo piece, if it's a group piece, you have more group dynamics that you can put in. But again, that's my personal opinion. But um, as I've been to shows and I see what I like, rarely do I see somebody who's so dynamic that, you know, I want to see 10 minutes of what they do. Um, you know, leave them wanting more. So if you leave them with a shorter piece and leave them wanting more and they want you back, that's great. As opposed to like, we think we've seen everything you do. Um, you don't want to overwhelm them with that. So try not to stick too much of all your great stuff into one thing. So those are some choreography tips. Um, also with the, with the music, I like to listen to my music over and over and over again to hear the basis of it for choreography. And that way I can hit the framework of the music. So I might like design my intro, um, have some a little bit of a middle section and a little bit of an end section. So I know how I'm starting, I know how I'm you know in the middle, and I know how I'm ending. So that helps to um, kind of have that hat, I call it framework to hang your hat on. So that way, sometimes you get nervous. I, I, I still get nervous. My husband goes up and get, performs, and he says he doesn't get nervous. Great. You know, some people are like that. I am not. I get very nervous before I perform. I don't get nervous to the point that I throw up, but the, the which I, I heard that Adele used to have that problem that she would, be, she would like hurl before her performances because she got so de deathly nervous. That happens to a lot of people. So there's a lot of ways to calm your performing fears. We'll cover that in another thing but we're, we're just covering choreography today but yeah sometimes when you're nervous you get lost in your music so I also like th that's one of the reasons why I like um, music that has a variety to it okay kitty get out of there I know she's getting into all kinds of things while we're here so we've got another cat cameo almost a cat butt cameo kitty 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 look we're talking about choreography you are like the epitome of just free flow here, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. All right. Here we go. Okay. So, um, yes. So the, that framework, that hearing the music will help you remember where you are in the song. So, for instance, I did this piece that had a fast song. And you, um, one of the cool tips that was given to me by a friend of mine when we were choreographing a piece together is you do not have to dance on every single beat. So that was a brilliant piece because when we did this piece of music, it was a faster piece of music. So if you have a faster piece of music, you could fill it with every single move you've got, or you can pause on some stuff and relish that. So when you're doing choreography, have some moves that are slower and more poses and different different tempos. So use the music. Don't just have everything be dun da 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 dun because that gets really boring to watch and kind of boring to do too. So also when you choreograph stuff, you want to choreograph in your energy energy parts and then your rest parts. So like when I um, even when I train people when they're, you know, I say, if you're, you're training to hoop at a festival or dance at a festival, you may be dancing for three hours. Three hours is a really long time. So there may be hoop moves that use a whole lot of body energy. So for instance, um, a big body move would be like one of these because you're using a lot of the core, core um, movements. So this is a big body move. You're using a lot of the legs, a lot of the core, and there's a lot of muscle groups involved in that. So you're gonna wipe yourself out fast. This is another one of those moves that is like, you use a lot, especially if you're jumping with this. It's great. It's a beautiful move, but it uses a lot of energy as opposed to something where you're, you're doing some isolations. This can be a slow down pace. So, you know, taking something out, off body moves can be you know, depending on what you're doing, those can be some moves that you can choreograph in that save some of your energy. So, um, also, you want to get your transitions in with your actual steps. So, like a little, in, you know, piece your, your, um, your little combos together. So, for instance, like if you have 
you know, your beats, uh, most dancers count with the counts of eight. Uh, musicians count in a different way. So um, they laugh at me when I count in eights. And I'm like, do you understand how dancers count? We count in, in eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so, yeah, when we do belly dance, then it's, it's you have really wacky music that has um, very different beats. And uh, like, I remember dancing to a piece and my dance teacher couldn't figure out why I could not figure it out. And I'm like, it's a 27 count. It, my mind can't even wrap around that, let alone my body getting steps in. So it's like, either you could pick on me for getting the arms right, or the, this portion right, or the footwork right, or counting. You know, but I can't get it all right this second. So if you give me time to go home and practice it, I might be able to get that. But um, 27 count was really bizarre. But anyway, um, so you want to get your counts down. I also, when I'm choreographing, I like to take notes. So um, the last piece that we choreographed, um, Savannah Hoopstar and myself, we um, did a, a duo choreographing for World Hoop Day. And then we did that piece um, for the... Um, Oh, oh, oh. Uh, hullabaloo show hullabaloo 2 so um so we did that same piece so we took and we wrote down we got out a piece of paper like literally get out a piece of paper and take notes and chore you know write down your choreography notes because you'll come up with this great stuff and you'll be like yeah 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 i got it and then the next day you'll come day go what the heck was that <laughs> so that might be a little challenging and hard so um, if you have some notes, that will be very helpful. So that's some really helpful tips on choreography. Um, and then you want to try and get some chore choreography combos. So for instance, here's one that I'm working on lately. And uh, let's see if I, if I have enough room to do it. I better use a smaller, smaller hoop. It's a smaller hoop, but you know. So let's see here. La 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 la. La la, and then it comes down and goes into an escalator. So it's going into like a hand coin spin, um, a hand hook, and then an escalator, and and then going down. So when I do this, um, not on camera, um, but uh, that that's like a like a, a, a seed for a choreography combo. So do 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 do. Drop twist. Whoop, there we go. Dropping the things. <laughs> Drop all the things. This is this is a big dangerous move too, especially in a small con con enclosed space. So okay. that one's not happening right now. <laughs> well, oh there it, it almost was. I totally had this this morning. Ugh. Anyway, it also with a small hoop, it's just not happening right now. I have too many things to hit in here. Anyway. Um, let's say, let's say, well, last year when I choreographed the World Hoop Day dance, there were several pieces in there, um, if you'd like to see what that looked like, and I also broke down all the choreography. So I'm doing the World Hoop Day dance this year for 2018 as well. World Hoop Day is, uh, Saturday, October 6th this year. So I am, uh, getting the music together, I'm looking for music right now. To, and starting the choreography on that, starting it nice and early. I found out last time that we didn't have a World Hoop Day dance. Um, the gal that normally does it wasn't available to do it, so I joined in to do it so that we still had one available to do, um, but I didn't have a lot of time to do it. But it was really cool, it was very fun, very easy, um, and so if you want to see what some choreography moves look like, go look at that, because that is a fully choreographed um, dance. and. Uh, that dance was a really cool thing of um, how moves can repeat as well. So, for instance, the chorus repeated, it was la 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 la, la 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 la, you know, so that there were moves that, that repeated over and over, and, you know, over and over, over and over, over and over, whatever those moves were, um, all repeated. So, if you go look up the World Hoop Day 2017, I have videos on that. I did live tutorials, all kinds of good stuff on that. So we'll be doing that again this year, <laughs> we meaning me. <laughs> and um, so if you have like ideas, suggestions, and things like that, go ahead, send them on in. If you have music suggestions, send them on in. Uh, we need copyright available stuff. So I'm looking for an original band, original music, 
um, that we have the rights to use, permission to use, so we can put it up on YouTube and Facebook and all that kind of good stuff, and um, you know, it won't get pulled down. So, anyway, that is a whole bunch of information, real quick, on choreography. So, uh, hopefully, you enjoyed that. So go back, you can rewind and, and listen to this again if you'd like. Um, but yeah, there's all kinds of things. So you can repeat moves. Do, 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 uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember. I, I almost have that one totally ingrained in my brain from last year, from last October. Um, but anyway, there's, there's some cool things like that. Yeah, <laughs> that was one of my moves. Out, in, out. That was a linear isolation, a, pu a linear push isolation is what I ended up calling that one. So, yeah, so in the, the World Hoop Day Dance is pretty cool because I tried to do, um, because we didn't have a lot of time to do it, I tried to keep the moves as simple as possible. Although the, the music appeared very fast, which it was, it was my husband's um, band, The Double Bills. And um, we had a, a unique piece of music um, that I actually ended up writing the lyrics for because we had to get it done quickly. And uh, so it, be, it was a total hooping song. It's called Full Circle. It's great. You know, because how do you get Wedgie and Escalator into a, a song, a normal love song? <laughs> you can if I write it. <laughs> so anyway, I wrote the lyrics and then my husband's bandmate wrote some of the music and both of them put that, that music together and, and did that. So I really appreciate Appreciate their help on that with the double bills and um, thank you so much <laughs> they did an awesome job of that and um, yeah so anyway we're do, we're going to do that again this year um, not necessarily their music if they have something available great um, but it, I would like to get some variety in this as well so if you you have like maybe your husband's band or you, you have a friend's band or you're in a band, let me know and get me some music. And um, if I'm totally moved by it and um, it makes sense for people to do, I like to have a, a different level of um, a variety of moves. So moves that um, a beginner can get and also that an advanced person can do a variation of that is a little higher level so that you know everybody can handle it so the beginners you know don't get left in the dust this is my personal theory on teaching I, I like to teach all levels are welcome because um, I don't want to leave anybody in the dust but I don't want anybody to get bored either so I will give you lots of variations to do so that you're not bored and usually a lot of times when you learn from somebody else they they're doing something different that you're not doing anyway so hopefully you're you're learning something from them anyway okay so the last thing that I wanted to chat with you guys about was um, I have my yum to try recommendations so last time we started with this this time I'm gonna end with them so it is Valentine's week so um, happy Valentine's Day week you know, I, I celebrate Valentine. I, in my opinion, Valentine's Day should be all year long. So it's like one of my favorite holidays of the year. Anyway, um, so it, it I, I, it's also like award season and stuff like that. And, and for some of us uh, in parts of the world where, where, where I'm at, um, other parts of the world, it's summer. But in our part of the world, it's winter. So um, a lot of people are, are, you know, Netflixing and chilling. So um, you might want some snacks to do that. So last week we covered drinks and healthy drinks. Today I'm going to cover healthy snacks. I'm going to go through these real quick. So I already have this one open. But do you like cheese puffs? Oh my goodness, you're going to love these. These are called Benitos. So Benitos, these are uh, mac and cheese. They are made with white beans. I know that sounds really weird, but they're really good. They're um, very cheesy. They're made with good ingredients. See, the ingredient list is um, pretty good and um, all like pronounceable stuff. So that's one of my big things with ingredient lists. So, I mean, these are really, whoops. The dogs love them as treats too, so if I'm not getting on the floor. We originally found these on discount at, at Ross. So if you have a Ross near you, um, but you can also order these online. That's the neat thing about online stuff. Not only can you see videos like this, but you can um, order stuff like this. So they're they're healthy and they're they're good. They're they're very tasty. So they look all cheesy and yellow and orangey. So you can actually get this color accomplished without food colorings <laughs> and additives. Um, 
Mmm. Very good. All right. So those are very delicious. Then we have another one I already have open. If you haven't already tried these, Harvest Snaps. So a lot of times we like um, snacks that you can grab and that they're, they're healthy. They're healthier than eating just regular chips. So chips are fried and stuff like that. And, you know, they have a lot. Sometimes they have trans fat stuff in them and um, oils that may not be very handy for you. Um, when I was going through stuff where I was trying to limit my carb intake and also sugar, um, I like these because, and especially... Um, these particular kinds. So they're um, snap pea crisps. <coughs> I don't know the magic that they do to make these, but they're really good. But they they uh, come out looking like this. Oops, that's a little one. Pardon my chewing. So they look like that. They're very good. They're very tasty. They they're savory because they, so they're salty. And then these have like. Green peas, vegetable oil, canola, safflower, and or sun, sa, sunflower and safflower oil, rice, salt, calcium carbonate, and vitamin C, which is a, a scarbidol palmate. So, that's it. So, um, really good. They're crunchy. They're nice and light. Um, they're low in calories per serving, uh, 120 calories per serving. And um, servings per container, which is really important. When you go to eat a bag of these, you've eaten several servings because I can do that. So I like to have um, real servings. It says there's three servings in here, and I still have some in here, so that means they're actually accurate on those. So um, they're pretty light, so they're not like really hugely filling, but they're really good and tasty. Now, those two um, suggestions, the, uh, the beans... The, the, the cheese puffs that had the beans in them and the, the crisps that had the peas in them. <laughs> Getting your veggies in. These do not count as real vegetables. So if you're counting these as a vegetable portion of your day, don't do that. <laughs> Get your vegetables in as a real veggie. So in like a cooked or raw format if you can. Um, so if you have a little bit of sweet tooth, I highly recommend these. These are called cocoa mills. So they're caramels. But instead of being made with sugar, they're made with coconut milk or they're, uh, instead of milk. So they're good if you do not um, do dairy. Okay? So if you're uh, trying to go away from dairy, these are really good. They're nice and sweet. They're very chewy and light. Um, and they're a nice little caramel. Again, they're a treat. It's, uh, it's a, like a little sweet treat. Uh, it says serving size about six pieces. Serving per container, 2.5. Calories 120. So, you know, not that I care about any of that part of it. I care what the ingredients are. The ingredients are organic coconut milk, organic coconut and water, which is the coconut milk, organic brown rice syrup, organic dried cane syrup, sea salt, and xanthan gum. That's it. Uh, that's, that's like what your candy should be. I guarantee you, if you, if you go to most commercial candies and you look at the ingredient list, it's like... A mouthful of stuff you can't usually pronounce. So give these a try if they're in a store near you. Um, I like them. They're they're very delicious, and they're actually made by, if I'm not mistaken, yes, um, I heard on the news they're made by a little Boulder company in Colorado. So this is technically a local product for us. So this is really awesome. So again, support your local um, your local. If you have a farmers market, great. You, you may be off the season of farmers markets. But we are here, but um, we used to have a nice indoor Denver one here that was really awesome. But um, <laughs> I I don't think they're they're going still right now. But you know, if they do have some, you know, if you can grow your own stuff in the middle of winter, great. Or can stuff or use some stuff that you know support your local your local businesses and um they will really appreciate that um you know these are your neighbors so when we support our local economy we support each other so you know if you sell something you know get it out there and then you know ask for for the the uh, recommendations in return for instance i sell hoops i make my my own hoops i don't make a ton of them i'm what's known as a boutique boutique not boutique <laughs> sounds so goober boutique Hoop maker. <laughs> so I make some beautiful um, hoops. You can see some of them on the wall over there. 
um, and custom custom hopes. So hoops, hopes. <laughs> Hopefully, make some hoops this week. Anyway, um, so if you are in the market for a hoop and you're local, um, give me a call. I do a complimentary hoop consultation, and um, yeah, so we get you sized up, not by what I think you should have, but what you think you should have. So whatever is going to be great and useful for you, that's what I'm all about. So, you know, it could be a small hoop, could be a big hoop, whatever. Depends on what your goals are, what your needs are, and I can help with help you with find the tubing size, the, the, the size, the style, the tape, all of that matters in what you're going to be using it for. So, um, Take that into consideration, whatever hoop maker you get your hoops from. So, um, also support your local hoop makers if you're not in the Colorado area, you don't necessarily have to support me. Um, but um, support your local hoop makers and know some of these things going in your your tubing sizes and things like that. Um, the the difference with tapes. So I do, like I said, I do a complimentary consultation. You don't have to be in the Denver, Colorado area. And I can do a video consult or a phone consult as well. So obviously, you know, you can't, you know, pick, t touch and feel and try all of these, but um, you can, you can definitely uh, know some more things than you did, you, than you might have known before. So like the care and feeding of your hoops, how to keep your hoops nice for as long as possible. So they don't always look gorgeous and pristine if you are actually using them, but there are things that you can do to help preserve the beautifulness of your hoop and the longevity of your hoop. So like, for instance, one of those big tips that I tell people, don't leave them in your car. So your car gets either hot in the summer or cold in the winter or, you know, whatever. The, the sun, the heat, the, the temperature, the humidity even can affect your hoops. So bring them inside into your, whatever your living climate is, and that will uh, help protect your hoops quite a bit. So, um, and one of the reasons it, it, it you know, that most hoops are made with plastic tubing. Plastic is subject to heat, hot and cold. And cold, cold in the cold, things break really easily. In the, in the heat, things melt, right? This is just common sense, but it, it it's common sense up to a point. I've destroyed some of my things um, through not using common sense. So you can learn by my mistakes, because um, I've already paid for them, quite literally. Um, <laughs> so you don't have to do some of those things. So those are some extra hoop tips that um, will help keep your tubes nice and lovely. Also, if you're hooping on hard surfaces like concrete, that will shred up your hoop like that. And if, if you have a hoop like this, this is a hoop that is a pearlized white. Um, so the tubing itself is a really pretty color. Um, but it's also like a little shreddy. This is, you know, one of those ones that I do not have taped on purpose and it gets, you know, if it gets nicked or bumped or whatever, I'm not like yeah, really whining about it. So, um, you know, but if I have a, ta a hoop that is, um, nicely taped, like I have this, um, one on the wall there that's got like a real, um, extravagant tape job on it and it's, you know, some expensive tapes on there. I do not want to be hooping on concrete with that because that'll shred it in two seconds. So I uh, do, do one walk the dog move and, you know, just kiss your pretty hoop goodbye. So anyway, alrighty, I've given you lots of information here. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Um, I really appreciate you guys for being here. Thank you so much. We can end on that smile breath that we started with. So we'll take that deep breath in smiling in and then exhaling and saying ha ah, like ha 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 so inhale it in exhale it out ha 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 you can laugh laugh it out or do whatever you like thank you reva thank you Lori, for for being here we really appreciate you all for being here thanks so much so share it like this video um uh, follow my channels, um, subscribe to my channels, all that kind of good stuff, YouTube, Facebook, all the interweb stuff. Um, anyway, thank you so much for being here. I hope I've provided you some great hooping, health, and yum to try fun information. All right, rock on, peace out, and I'll see y'all hopefully next week. Let me know if you guys want to see this on a weekly basis or once a month. So let me know. And I'll talk to you and see you soon. All right. Bye.